Hello and welcome to the Trial On Podcast. A lot of transfer news around at the moment. Uh, Tim Tom Dearden's going to the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's rumours around that Mitchell Moses could go to the Broncos. I, I don't know what's going on in rugby league right now. Where, where, are you, where are your thoughts on Mitchell Moses walking? And if Mitchell Moses goes there, and then Adam Reynolds is probably in the box seat there to go to the Eels. The Sharks are all, also in the running for Adam Reynolds. The Rabbitohs haven't given up on signing him either. Yep. Tony Staggs is a big chance of going to the Eels as well. There's a lot going on. Mitchell Moses, that's who I want to focus on. Mitchell Moses, I think, is a really quality half at the moment in a league that there's not too many great halfbacks going around. Mm-hmm. Would you be happy to see him go to the Broncos and bring in Adam Reynolds, or would you rather Mitch Moses? No, no, you keep Mitch Moses. Uh, we were talking about this earlier. He's, t- he's 26, so he's just entering his prime, so his best footy is yet to come. I think so too. So, I, don't, I think he's a really good player. I think he's maturing. I, I really like him. Um, Adam Reynolds, that's the hot ticket at the moment for a lot of clubs. I know the, the Broncos are interested. Para are very interested. The Sharks are interested. Um Obviously, the Rabbitohs still want to keep him. The Cowboys were interested. They seem like they've chosen their halves for 2022 with Dearden and Chad Townsend. Yep. So there's a lot of movement going around. Now, as for the Broncos, Katoni Staggs, that's that's the signature they want to lock up. Yep. They've let, they've let offhand Gowie go. They've let McCulloch go. They've now let Dearden go. Reese Walsh. Reese Walsh and Dave Fafita. Like, what's going on? The Broncos? You can build a team around the players that have let go. I just don't know what their plan is, though. I just I do not know what's going on. I really like their forward pack, but to let David Feeder go, that that was a huge one. Mm-hmm. Now they they identified at the start of the year there's three signatures they want, which was Tom Dearden, um, Xavier Coates, and Katoni Staggs. Yeah, they're the three that they wanted to re-sign. There's rumours that they didn't even offer Dearden a contract. Honestly, I don't know what's doing. Why would you not offer him? Well. What, what's that word? Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. they didn't offer him a contract. Well, that, that's what's getting around, that, that they didn't. But he, they he's didn't, the pick of the halves there for them at the moment. Well, he's probably one of the best young prospects in, in terms of halves going around. Yeah. And for you guys not to even offer him a contract, and you've got such, like, they've, they've got huge wraps on him. Huge wraps. So, I don't know what, what's still in there. I think Croft on the weekend was an absolute liability in defence, mm. personally. Um. Uh, other than that, a uh, huge weekend of footy. Really enjoyed all the games. Anzac round, it's always a good round. Um, Saturday was a bit of a the upset day. Yeah. With the Cowboys and Bulldogs winning. Really happy for both those sides, especially the, uh, the Bulldogs. Good to see them get a win. Yep. Uh, a couple of char- charges out of the weekend. Jordan Piera, uh, grade three, careless high tackle. That's pretty fair. He's, he's out for three weeks. Could miss five if he tries to challenge <clears throat> it. I don't think he'll challenge it, though. No. Ravalara was handed a grade two shoulder charge for his offence. Uh, he's looking at the two to three games here. And Josh Curran was sim bin for... I, I think he made contact with the head, but I... It's a head clash. Yeah, I, I, I didn't even think it was a sim bin, but he's facing one to two weeks. I think he could fight that. But the main one was the Talakai one. Mm. Now, you messaged me. I was at work. You messaged me, and you said you just missed one of the biggest hits. It was I've huge. Seen. It was monstrous. Well, there was nothing wrong with it. The refs cleared it, and it's the bunker that l- went back and had a look at it. Yeah, well, the the thing the thing I had a problem with, right? Well, here's the thing. They called it a shoulder charge. I didn't think it was a shoulder charge. No, no. I thought he was trying to wrap his arm around, and all you got to do is try and make an effort to wrap the arm around. Yeah. I thought he tried to do that. The contact with the head thing, that gets him a charge. Yeah. But he's been suspended for a shoulder charge facing six weeks. I, was, don't, I don't see how it's a shoulder charge. The shoulder was... It was like out, and he was like, "How else are you supposed to tackle?" I don't know. What are you supposed to just like? I don't, I don't understand. I, I loved it. I I think he should be punished for making contact with the head. I think that's what we should be trying to outlaw in the game. Yeah. So, but that tackle, we should not be trying to outlaw that tackle. That's no. a good tackle, but if you make contact with the head, that's when you get your suspension. So, um, maybe a different charge there. The difference between the Ravalara one and the Talakai one was evident because Ravalara tucked his shoulder in. And we, we've spoken about this before. You said it looked like he was trying to brace, but that's what they're trying to get out of the game, where you tuck your shoulder in and you got like that. Mm. And then when this separates from your body, that's when they constitute a shoulder charge. But his arm was out, yeah. and he looked like he's trying to wrap it around. So I didn't think it was a shoulder charge. Anyway, huge shot. What do you think of the games? The games, they're all pretty good games. Like, I didn't see the... Well, I did see the Cowboys winning. I, I called that. But the doggies... I know. 
I thought they they were all, they they were not going to win for any money. Oh, that was my safe bet of the whole weekend. Yeah, but let's get into uh, Thursday night. Rightio. So the Panthers versus the Knights. They beat them twenty four to six. Uh, Panthers extend their streak to seven now for the season. Um, can you see the Panthers losing anytime soon? I'm just hold on before you, before you answer that. I'm going to rattle off the next five games. Right. So they have right. got Manly, Cronulla, Gold Coast, South, and Doggies as the next five. Can you see them losing any of those games? I mean, the the Manly one, yeah, it's going to be a great game. Uh, the rest of them, I can't see him faulting in any of those. Latrell's back for that Rabbitohs one. I think I look forward. I think that's the game he gets back. Yep, it is. I think I think Origin time, maybe maybe they might be in some trouble. But then, so they, they, they definitely lose Cleary. Burton comes into the halves. I think they've still got a lot of depth. They're still going to have their hooker and their fullback as well. So they, they're going to move. Uh, they, they'll probably lose uh, Yo as well. Yeah. So they're going, they're going to have some players out then, but... Geez, they're playing good footy. I thought the Knights fought really hard here, but as we've seen time and time again, now the Pan- there was 10-6 with like 20 to go, and then we've seen it all year. The Panthers have another gear, and not many other sides in the comp have that gear. Mm-hmm. And when they go to that place, they're so hard to beat. They scored 14 points in 18 minutes to go 7-0. and zero. Uh, James Fisher-Harris got the three points here. I thought he was great. Mm. Um, I wanted to ask you, where do the Knights go from here? Like, do, do you take a lot out of that game, or where, where do you put the Knights right now? I mean, that's on par with how the Panthers are defended for the entire year. I think they're only averaging six points against them over the first seven rounds. Mm. So, I mean, the Knights played a good game. It's just the Panthers are just on another level. Yeah. So, I wouldn't be too upset if I was a Knights fan. Because they're still a good side. Um, just the Panthers are just... I mean, I don't think anyone can beat them at, at the moment. Yeah, no, I, th- I think they're killing it at the moment. And like I said, they go to a place that not many teams can go to. Yeah. And it's scary because they can put up points in bunches and they just intimidate sides, I mm. reckon. Anyway, I thought it was a great game. Yeah, me too. Uh, anyway, on to Friday, we got the Rabbits. They beat the Titans 40 points to 30. Kind of a tale of two halves here. Titans went up um, at the break. Was it twenty four, ten? Oh, something like that. Yeah, they were, they were definitely smashing them at the break. Yeah, twenty four ten. Dave Feeder with the first half hat trick. He was really really good in the first half. Kind of slowed down in the second half. Didn't really get himself involved. I um, think I read somewhere he had three runs in the second half. That's not a good sign. Yeah, no. You got to you got to be taking more than three runs. You got to be able to do it when your team's not like on the on, back foot oh, yeah. when, when they're on the front foot it's good but when they're on the back foot you got to be able to do something as well yeah exactly um, Benji he, he looked like he turned back the clock a little yeah uh, ended up with two tries couple try assists few line break assists and he, you know he just looked really good why uh, Wayne Bennett brought him in it's it's good to see though because uh, there was like rumours around the day that he was going to play in the centres and I was shook I didn't think he was ever going to play in the centres no um, and then when I saw the score line because I was at work I thought if he's played in the centres and scored a double and carved up the Titans, I don't I don't know what rugby league is anymore. But <laughs> yeah. he played uh, he played five eight. Cody Walker played fullback. This is exactly why the bloke was brought into the club for cover. Yeah, so they can move things around, and he's a he's, he's a great player. Um, I thought he played really really well. Two tries seemed like he was in everything. Mm. On to David Feeder in a losing side though. Three tries, three line break assists, uh, three line breaks. 11 tackle breaks, one offload, and 106 metres. When things are going their way, is he the best forward in the competition? Maybe even when things aren't even going his way. Well, apart from that second half. I think he's, he is the best forward in the, in the comp. I think he's well, he would be right up there on trial scored this year. I think he's up there with the um, daily M votes as well. He's killing it. He got two uh, daily M votes in this game and a losing side. Yeah, he's he's playing such good footy, man, and he's so damaging. And to think, the Broncos have watched this bloke since he was a kid. And to think they let this guy walk out in their club, I just don't know. And they signed Pangai Junior over over Dave Fafita. Well, they signed everyone over Dave Fafita. Really? Like they left him to last. But anyway, we're not talking about the the Broncos. We're talking about the the Rabbits. Good game. Great game from the Rabbits. Yeah, yeah, really good. Good second half comeback. They they're really firing that second half. Different can, team, totally different team. Well, they can just run up a score. If yeah. they can get a fair share of possession, <clears throat> they're so silky, they can run up a score. Um, good to do it without... Good to put 40 on without Latrell there too, so good on them. Yeah, good on. Anyway, P- 
Para beat Broncos 46-6. to uh, Okay, so I've, I've got a question here. It's a little bit out of the blue. Yep. So the Broncos, they, they're almost at full strength here. I think the only players that are really missing were Katoni Staggs and Alex Glenn. I think he was a late withdrawal as well. Um, so they only completed at 66% and they missed 49 tackles. So they were, they were pretty bad on both sides of the ball. So what, what can you see, like, where do you see the Broncos going from here? What, what can they do to, to improve? That, that is so funny that you say that because I've, in my notes, I've got the fact that they completed 66% and missed 49 tackles oh, okay. in my notes because <laughs> I thought that is just not good enough from the biggest club in Queensland. Mm. This is That's the side. The Broncos forever were the big side in Queensland. Everyone else was the little brother. They're, they're meant to be the, um, the standard for Queensland Rugby League, really, yeah. the Broncos. Uh, not only that, you look at their halves, didn't force a single dropout, didn't try and build any pressure there. Uh, they kicked a few, their kick defusal was uh, 54%. That's coming from a team that decided uh, Reese Walsh wasn't their future and Jermaine Asako is. And their kick defusal was uh, 54%. And 15 errors, the error count for a lot of sides this year has been more than what we're used to, but 15 errors isn't just isn't good enough. Yep. I don't know. I think it's externally. I think they need to bring players in. I think they need to just blow this roster up, especially especially the backs. Just mm. explode the, the back line and start again. Right. Okay, so we, we heard talks that Kevy Walters was going to do a mass culling. Yep. So who would you drop out of that team? Well, I think... I think, well, now Dean's gone. Mm-hmm. Milford and Croft both aren't safe. Mm-hmm. They, they can't play anymore. Yep. Like, they've they, they, they got to find something somewhere else because on the weekend, Croft was a liability on the defensive side, for sure. And then other than that, I don't mind Osako. I think he's I think he's more a fullback. I think he's more a winger, winger than a yeah, fullback, I was say fullback, personally. Yeah. Um, I think Katoni Staggs needs to stay. I don't mind Herbie Tha- Farmworth as another centre mm-hmm. for them. Yep. So they've definitely got some pieces. Maybe that's maybe that's the key. They got to bring in a Moses, or they got to they got to go find someone that the team can get around. Because I've said consistently, I've sat here every week and said I like their forward pack. Yeah, no, I their like what their forward really pack good. can do. So I don't know. I think it's it's all about the backs, and you got to blow that whole system up. Yeah. And the recruitment. I saw um, a post today. The recruitment have to take some responsibility for what they've done here, because yeah. it's it's not the players' fault. They built this team around players that just haven't had the tools to do what they need to do yeah and they uh, and it started last year and it's gotten worse and it's systemic and they need to blow the whole system up yeah i, I think they've they've gone backwards huge 100 percent. i think you're, you're spot on there yeah so we were talking about this earlier and there's been talks that um mitchell moses has been linked with the broncos so let's just say hypothetically you're mitchell moses yeah oh, yeah all right how yep. much are you willing to te- like not willing how much would the Broncos have to offer you for you to go play for him it'd have to be heaps it would have to be heaps the thing is it, we, you said before he's in his prime of his career he's 26 yep. I think he's in a good situation there at, pa- at Parramatta so to leave that to uproot your, your whole life to Queensland to go play in that system right now mm-hmm. I'm not going there for less than 1.1 I'll tell you that right now it's a lot of money do you agree? Like, oh, there's no upside to go there right yeah, now. No, well, you, you're leaving a top four side over the last two seasons. Top to, top four side that's going up too. Yeah, going up. That's only getting better. Yeah, to go to a wooden spooner now. Now, what are they coming? Fifteenth. Yeah, and they look. They just they look all out of sorts. It's really sad, and we'll get to the Tigers when we get there. But the Tigers and the Broncos to dish up dish up what they dished up last week. Where we sat here and said, "Oh, plenty of good effort there for the Broncos. Good to see. Plenty of enthusiasm from the Tigers. Good to see. To toss up what they tossed up this week, it's not good enough." Yeah, definitely. Anyway, on Saturday, uh, the upset day, upset day of the round. Yeah. Um, so Bulldogs they beat the Sharks eighteen points to twelve. Doggies came out of the gates firing. They were yeah. they were looking pretty good. Um, they scored three tries in the first twenty minutes. The first half, the rest of the first half was you know decent by them the Sharks kind of found their feet then um, but the second half was I thought it was a little bit sloppy from both teams yeah well I think the Sharks had about 5,000 chances to win this game didn't they yeah they, they yeah. bombed bombed a lot of tries in this game 
And yeah. to, to the Bulldogs' credit, they end up holding them out and getting the win there. Yeah, I, I don't know if the Bulldogs really bombed those tries or is re- Not the Bulldogs, sorry, the, the Sharks, Sharks really bombed those tries or is you know, good online defense from the Doggies because there was a few times they went out right to the that winger, yeah. Roddy, I think his name is. And they've they've tackled him and he's dropped the ball or he's you know he's he's lost he's gone into touch something like that I don't know. Um, it's good they found something though the Bulldogs yeah, they, they found something that and it might have been an eighteen point start that gave them the confidence to find that but they just had a bit of grit and they wanted to win and they got the job done. Uh, Trent uh, Trent Barrett said it was the best win he's ever been a part of, captain, uh, coach or player. Which you, think of about that what you will, but that says what this club and what this job means to that bloke yeah which I, I love to see i think he was tearing up after the game yeah so that's really good will hopper gets the three points here um it'd be be interesting to see what happens next week like if, if the bulldogs can back this kind of performance up who doesn't they, i don't know i don't know who they got it doesn't really matter if they win or not it's it's effort based you know it'd yeah it'd be good to see if they can back the effort up because effort wise they've probably been beaten in every single game on effort Apart from this week, yep. Um, I'll 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 bounce straight into my Cowboys. Okay. I was more happy about this win than I have been about the other two, and it's not even close. The other two? Who are the other two? We the... beat the Tigers and we beat the Bulldogs. Bulldogs, Tigers, yeah. Bulldogs. Okay, yeah. Yes, but they were they were two not that great wins. Yeah. This one was a good win for the boys. Yeah. Uh, it blew my mind. They won three in a row. Val gets the man of the match. Gets the three points. I thought he was great. Uh, really good to see him finding some form there at fullback. Mm-hmm. Um, they were down 24-6 with four minutes to go in the first half. Then they scored 20 straight points, and I was absolutely stoked. I did want to uh, throw to you on one moment in the second half that we both, I think we both agree on here, uh, the O'Neill try. Offside. I think it's offside. Offside every day of the week. Yeah. Uh, I thought I thought it was offside live, and then when they went to the video, I said, well, this will be called back. Yeah, he's in front of the kicker. Well, I don't know how they. What? How don't they call that then? Yeah, well, it, it doesn't matter if your foot's off the ground or touching the ground. You're in front of the kicker, oh. so you're offside. It's so silly, but like they have the technology, like they use it in soccer and everything. Run a line across. Yeah, I think the, well, the I think the the twenty meter or the ten the meter 10 line meter was right there. Right there, you can use that for reference. So exactly. I don't know. That's that's what I I always look for those kind of markings <clears> on the field. Yeah. Just run a line across, and if anything's in front of that line, he's offside. Yeah. And he was he was right on the advantage line. Um, for the Cowboys' credit, they, they were good enough to win anyway. Like, the, mm-hmm. the Raiders bombed a lot of chances as well. They're absolutely out of sorts. I don't know what's wrong with them. They've won one in their last five. Yeah. A I've, team that we both thought were a chance of making the grand final. Yeah. Well, I've got to hear my notes. They've lost four of their last five. Um, two of them went to Penrith and Para. Yeah. But... They lost to the Warriors, right? They were winning. What was it? Where did I got it? They were leading twenty-five to six, right? And the and the Warriors come back and win thirty-four to thirty-one. Yep. Right, and then they're leading twenty-four to six against the Cowboys, and then the Cowboys end up winning. What was the score? Uh, twenty-six twenty-four. Yeah. Like we we were saying this last year, the Canberra Raiders would you know it'd be a pretty close first half. They'd be probably losing. Sometimes they'd be winning. Yeah. Like either or. But the second half, they'd come and they'd blow teams out of the water. And that was their strong point that after half-time, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And this year, it's the, it seems like it's the total opposite. Which is not good. It is you not kinda good. Wanna, They're going backwards. <laughs> yeah, you want to finish strong, if anything. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's going on down there. I think it's a huge test this week. I think they got the bunnies on the Friday <clears> night. Uh, that's a massive test. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going on in Canberra. I don't, they're not a top eight side for mine at the moment. No, not a hundred percent. No way. And they've got so much talent in that club. They do so much talent. So it's it's hard to watch. Good win for the Cowboys. Yep, good win. Anyway, on to Anzac Day, the Sunday, uh, the first game, Manly defeat Wests, forty points to six. Oh yeah. Yeah. Look, Turbo Tommy, Tommy Bra, he's Tommy back bruh. and he's and and Manly are flying. It's like they're a totally different team. I'm telling you, I'm yeah. telling you right now. Since he's been back, seventy six. 76 to 6 or something in the last two games yeah because they beat the Titans something nil 76 to 6 in the last two games that's what he's brought he's played 135 minutes in the last two weeks he scored two tries four try assists four line breaks three uh, three line break assists nine tackle breaks 410 metres 
And I just want to say, for the record, if anyone doesn't know, Tommy Bro runs these streets. Go hide. <laughs> lock your doors. He's on the prowl. He is a lunatic. Even if you lock your doors, it's not enough. Don't lock your doors. Yeah. Don't lock your There's doors. There's nothing you can do. Leave it wide open. He's getting in anyway. Yeah. Um, um, I'm in love with the man. And I don't know what to say about the Tigers. I'm unlucky that Tom was on the field. But they started well. The Tigers started well. Yeah. And then Cherry Evans almost scored three tries in five minutes. The game was over. Yeah, well, it was it was 6-0. And, and then, they were playing good footy. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what happened. Uh, but Tommy Bra. Tommy, Tommy Bra happened. happened. <laughs> Jesus. Just um, be scared. I was going to ask you a question, but now I forget. Was it about Tommy? Because it's it, yes. I think, it, I think yes. that's what it was. It was about Origin last year. Yeah. Right. So, um, do you think New South Wales yeah. miss, missed his production there in the oh, centres? yeah. Man, he's going to walk into this side. If he's fit, he walks into the, this New South Wales side. And I don't know how they get beat. I don't know how you deal with the man. And we talked about... This is very important, actually. Someone brought up, how do you keep Tommy out of the game, <clears throat> right? And we talked about maybe kick to the wings and, and diffuse him that way. The bloke goes... If he's not in the game, he goes get takes a hit up off the ruck. One off the ruck. He just has a hit up and breaks the line. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you won't give me the ball, I'll go get it. Yeah. Like, that's that's the difference between a good player and a great player. Mm. Like, They'll he's going to he's gonna get himself in the game no matter what. Yeah. And he's just playing unbelievable. I love watching him. Yeah, yeah. One of those players that can create something out of nothing. Literally nothing. Yep. Uh, anyway, on to the next game. Roosters beat the Dragons 34-10. to 10. Thought it was going to be a closer game. Mm -hmm. Then you brought to my attention that um, once per uh, Piera... Pereira, yeah, um, high shot Teddy. He's gone for ten. Um, the Dragons were up six four, was yeah, it? Six four, and then uh, they went into half time sixteen six. Yeah, sixteen. So in six. seven minutes, the game so, pretty much changed. Yeah, and we we were we were torn whether that should have been a send off or a sin bin. You were you were set on the, you were like sin bins, all right. Yeah, and I was like oh send off, and then you were saying it's easy to say what it could have been in hindsight. But yeah. I think I think you can't take the result too much into it like he got so Teddy Teddy went off for HIA right mm -hmm. so that that's so that's a sim bin in my opinion yeah. but Teddy doesn't come back we don't know if Teddy's going to come back or not yeah exactly so after he, got, after he doesn't come back that's when people say well maybe it should have been a send off mm -hmm. well that's easy to say in hindsight if he comes back in 15 minutes you know like then the game the is yeah. yeah yeah warranted it's, it's hard I, I think send offs are so absolute and a lot of people want the send off to to come back I think it's such a huge move I like the 10 in the bin and then you have the injury sub if someone goes off I think this we reserve the send off for like intentional real bad like bad, real bad fouls there was one a few years ago that wasn't even 10 in the bin but a Corey had scored a try and he was on the ground and J uh, James Roberts slammed his elbow back into the back of his head that's a send off All right, that's that's an intentional act against the game yeah. that's what I think send off should be used for I think use the 10 in the bin for almost everything else yeah. just to go off on a little bit of attention whatever happened to James Roberts oh, well, I don't know he used to be so good I don't know he still he, he had moments on the weekend he has really good balance but the Tigers are just lost for mine uh, 37 and a half thousand fans at this game on the weekend that's really good to see um, I thought the game was over the seven minutes that seven minute period in the first half uh, where the old mate was in the bin. I thought that ended the game. Yep. Uh, again, the Roosters were good enough to go on with it. The Sam Walker was outstanding. He just mm -hmm. he just keeps getting better. Yep. Now, the round six, we talked about the round six uh, curse with the Dragons. They they go really well until round six. And a lot of people came out and said, it's not happening this year. No, never happening this year. Mm -hmm. They've now lost two in a row. They're into, I think, seventh or something, sixth or seventh. Well, they didn't look too good on the week. They looked good. As you, as you said, leading up to that 10 in the bin, and then... I don't know. We could... I don't know. I'm just saying, it happens a lot. Um, Jack Bird into the halves didn't mind it. Didn't mind it. Look, what I understand is... They were, they were winning games with yep. Clune and Norman in the halves. That's what I was thinking. So, if they... They lose one game, right? They, they lost one... Who'd they lose to last week? They lost to the Warriors, and the Warriors were perfect. Exactly. Yeah. And like they they went they won what they went two and two, yeah. Two. They've gone two and two since Ben Hunt's here. I think so. Yeah. 
I think, but they were winning games. Yeah, they were winning games with Clune and Norman, yep. So why would you change that? I don't understand. Especially, like, on the day. Yeah. Well, they, they probably trained, like, that all week. But I just don't understand. I thought Clune was playing okay, too. Mm. And even though Jack Bird... Jack Bird come on and played pretty well. And he's yeah. been in form. He's not going to be in the halves when Ben Hunt's back. So mm. I, I don't know why the sake for one game do that. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, the Dragons lose. That's two in a row. You're reading in anything or you just, you, you're waiting on the Dragons? Let's see how they go next week. All right. Last because, game. Yeah, yeah, last chance. Well, we said round six was last chance. But anyway, <laughs> on to the last game of the round. Uh, Storm, they beat New Zealand uh, 46 to 20. So a good first half from Storm. They let in a few uh, soft tries at the end there yeah 70 in the 70s 70 years minutes I, th- I thought they they probably won't be happy about that the no, end of well, that game i've got that they they'd be disappointed in in letting in those soft tries mm. uh but reese walsh he had a really good game had his hand in a few tries his kicking game looked you know good he looks silky talk about being thrown into the fire reese mm. walsh yeah i mean jesus well what a, what a way to start you're off your nrl career yeah in melbourne starting fullback Jesus um, I think Melbourne haven't lost a home game in like 15 games or something in the last time they lost at, at home was round three last year against the Raiders so that's um that's a it's a hard place to play they've made it a bit of a graveyard there for a few years now Jerome Hughes gets the man of the match he was outstanding he was in everything yep uh, just the storm is so hard to beat at home 40 did you say 46 or was it 42 I got 46 oh, I don't know well, they might have got another try. <laughs> um, yeah. Is Jerome Hughes the most underrated halfback in the NRL? Look, just off the top of my head, maybe. Because, if, so, who you got in your top five for halfbacks? Because I've got Cleary, DCE. Mitch Moses. Probably Moses. I mean, Jerome Hughes would probably have to be there. He probably has to be in the top five. Yeah, he'd have to be in the top five. But he goes, he, yeah, you, you're right. He, he goes a bit under the radar. Well, uh, for a lot of years, like, like for a lot, a lot of time since he's been halfback, people are saying, yes, he's playing halfback, but he's not a halfback. Mm. I think he's a halfback. Yeah, he is a halfback. He's starting yeah, to prove he's, he is. he's got all the all the ingredients there. They're, they're going to be in a little trouble around origin time too. They'll have a few players there. Monster, Harry Grant will probably be there. Pap, Harry yeah. Grant. That's, that's three of their four in their spine. It's, yeah. It's going to be in the, the uh, origin setup. Um, I don't think many other Josh had a car. Yeah, he'll so, definitely. And maybe even Branko Lee. It depends how he comes back. Like he might be in the centres for Queensland. They they really need a centres. Surely not. Well, we actually only have one noted centre that's going to be picked. Like Dane Gagai. And then after that, who Dane who Gag- you pick? Well, you, Dane Gagai is an Origin winger. No, but he'll play in the centres because we don't have centres. Wait, wait, so who are you gonna? So you play Xavier Coates on one wing and Val Holmes on the other. Ah, yeah, yeah. So well, then, no, we put Capewell in the centres then. No. Well, he did a he did a job job for years. I'm last saying year. he's in the conversation. Branko Lee Brinko will be Lee's in the conversation. No. So will Will Chambers if it's you can Capewell. find some for. Will Chambers not playing origin. <laughs> they need centers, bro. We got it's no centers. Capewell and Dan Gagai. We'll see. We'll see. I think we need centers. Will Capewell okay, can play in the forwards too. But he's a, he I picked him in the centers. I'm just saying there's other people that Branko can... Lee or Will Chambers will not get picked. I so said they can. They, they're in the conversation. Branko Lee's right in the conversation. No, they're out of the conversation. They're in. What they're about out. Philip Sammy? Is he in the conversation? No, he's not in the conversation. All right. All right. <laughs> we'll see you Wednesday. 